Number 13. Suppose a 900 kilogram car is on the bridge in figure 9.33 with its center of mass halfway between the hinges and the cable attachments. The bridge is supported by the cables and hinges only. Letter A. Find the force in the cables. All right, so here's our little picture. Now what the picture doesn't show is that there should actually be two cables in this problem. All right, um, that's basically what a drawbridge would need. Um, I know it only shows one, so if you just assumed it was one, you're, all the numbers will be double, but I'm gonna consider that there should be two here in order for it to be a properly functioning bridge. Okay, so what I did was I drew, I basically condensed all the information down into this uh, diagram. And um, this is the weight of the bridge. That's center of mass is 1.5 meters away from the hinges as it's evidenced in the picture. And this will be the weight of the car. All right, and it's halfway on the bridge. The total bridge length is nine meters. So it's 4.5 meters away from both ends. And everything else, you know, corresponds perfectly to the picture. So now uh, we are tasked to find the force in the cables. So if you look at the uh, picture on the upper right, the cables are represented by this structure. So basically what we're looking to do is we're looking to find T. Okay, that'll be the force or the tension. Uh, tomato, tomato. So what we now need to look at is, well, how do we figure out what T is? So what we need to do is we need to figure out first and foremost where we want to place our axis of rotation. All right, if we're looking at this picture and we're trying to figure out what it looks similar to, it looks similar to a torque problem, right? We have a certain lever arm here. There's forces acting along a continuum, right? Or along certain distances. Uh, so therefore it should be a torque problem. And now we need to place our axis of rotation. You might say, well, where's it going to rotate? Now, I mean, in terms of the picture, right? on the upper right, it should be rotating around the hinges, but you don't necessarily have to choose that particular point. Uh, for this problem though, we do, uh, just because the unknowns are such that for this um, force, we do not know the force nor the angle. And therefore what we wanna do is we do wanna put our axis of rotation right here. The reason why we wanna do that is because the lever arm for now this force is zero and therefore there is no torque produced by that force. So it essentially cancels itself out, okay? Um, however, though, on other problems, if I you know, knew these pieces of information, you don't have to necessarily choose this as your uh, axis of rotation, as we've seen in problems that uh, we've done in the past here for this chapter. Anyway, moving forward, um, our job is to find now the tension. I have my axis of rotation. I know this bridge is in equilibrium, therefore I can say that the sum of the torques will all equal zero. Okay, how many torques are there now in the problem? Well, there's three, because there's three forces and they're each acting on a rigid bar. Uh, therefore, uh, I'm now going to expand on the three different torques in my equation here. And just thinking about what should be negative and positive uh, this torque here produces or would produce a rotation of the bar that is counterclockwise, right, of the bridge. Therefore, that is a positive torque, and these all would produce clockwise rotations, so they would be negative. Okay, so I'll call this uh, T1, and these I will all call T sub B and then T sub C. Okay, so now T1 minus T sub B minus T sub C will all equal zero. Okay, now, uh, I, yeah, I already, so this is tension. I'm already noticing how this could be confusing to you guys. Um, remember, the T's I just wrote here are torques. Okay, so let me, uh, let me curve the top of the T a little bit. Okay, let me actually erase them. All right, these are the torques and torque and torque. Do not confuse that with this T, the straight bar T, uh, that represents tension, a.k.a. force, okay? So now let's expand on all three of these torques. All three of the torques can be expanded, expanded upon by RF sine theta. So this will be, torque one will have R1, F1, which is essentially T1, right? That's just what I mentioned, times sine theta one. Um, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm already gonna move these, otherwise just a pain in the neck. Let's just add these two on over to the right-hand side, and then I'm gonna expand on them. Okay, so now this will be equal to 
the torque of B, which is now positive, so that's R sub B, F sub B, aka the weight, and sine theta sub B, plus R sub C, F sub C, and sine theta sub C. So now, if we look at the picture, all of the forces form right angles, except for the tension. So therefore, the torque produced by the uh, bridge, the torque produced by the car, all those signs cancel, okay? Because sine of 90 is one. So now, uh, remember, our goal is to solve for T1, right? So I can basically divide out R1 and sine theta one. So this is now T1 will equal RB, FB, okay, plus RC, FC, all over R1 sine theta one. And this is it, okay, now we can calculate. So let's plug in the values. So T1 will equal the lever arm for the bridge, right, relative to the axis of rotation, and that is 1.5 meters, okay? So 1.5 multiplied by the force of the bridge, meaning the weight of the bridge, okay? Now the bridge has a mass of 2,500 kilograms. Where did I get that number from? Take a look at number 12. All right, that's where it came from. So this is 2,500 kilograms multiplied then by 9.8 plus our lever arm for the car. Remember it's halfway, so therefore it's gonna be 4.5 meters. And then the force or the weight of the car, here's the mass, 900 multiplied them by gravity, 9.8. All right, all divided by now R1, and R1 would be the total lever arm here, right? So that's nine, if we added up those values, multiplied then by the sine of 40. All right, so all we have to do is just plug this on in. I'm gonna move this up, all of this up slightly, just so I can put the answer here at the bottom. Okay, so I don't have to use another line. So T1 will now be equal to, let's do it. So 1.5 times 2,500 times 9.8 plus 4.5 times 900 times 9.8. Divide that by now parenthesis nine times sine of 40. And there we go. Now remember, I should have probably put in a two here, but the value here comes out to be uh, 13,213 uh, Newtons. Now, remember, this is really the total tension, okay? But remember, before I mentioned that there are uh, two uh, cables. So this is the total for all the cables, right? So if I had to find the, the tension in each or the force of each, you would have to take this value and divide it by two, okay? So I would say that the tension in each, uh, the tension for each cable would now be, just take that value, divide it by two, so this now works out to be 6,000, yeah, about 6,610. And that'll be in terms of uh, Newtons, all right? So basically, you know, the bridge should have at least two cables there, so this should be the answer. But I know it doesn't say it anywhere explicitly in the problem. However, you know, that's that should be the more appropriate answer rather than dealing with um, only one cable, which is kind of unreasonable. Uh, okay, so I think letter A, that concludes letter A. Yeah, that's pretty good. And now let's take a look at letter B. So find the direction and magnitude of the force exerted by the hinges on the bridge. All right, so this one's a little trickier. Um, if we notice, going back to the picture, okay, we cannot perform the same process uh, whereby we, let's say, choose now the axis of rotation to be here, okay? We get rid of that torque produced by that force. And now I have three torques produced by those forces and solve it the same way. The problem is I have two unknowns. I don't know this force and I don't know this angle. All right, so we cannot do it that way. And if you, th you, know, if you were to think ahead a little bit there, well, maybe you come up with that formula and then we can find some other formulas to substitute stuff in. But the problem is that uh, you would notice that the variables will start to cancel themselves within the formulas. Uh, so we need to uh, think about this a little differently. And we can think back to basic force ideas that all the forces have to balance in this problem. 
okay? And I'd like to break it up into X and Y components. So I know that since this whole thing is in equilibrium, I know all the forces in the X direction will be equal, right? Or will sum up, I should say, to be zero. And all the Y forces in this problem should also sum up to be zero as well, right? So I can say that the sum of the forces in the X direction should equal zero, and the sum of the forces in the Y direction should also equal zero. Why? Because it's in equilibrium, all right? It's not moving. So um, now that we have uh, that under our belt, let's take a look at the sum of the forces in the X direction. So if you look at these four forces, one, two, three, four, which have X directions to them? Well, you'll say this one and that one, and you'd be correct, okay? So uh, let's say that, you know, uh, what I, you know what, let me draw these each out in a little coordinate system up here, okay? I'm gonna draw this as my F. So here's the F, and here's theta, okay? And then I'll draw the second um, one as well. I'll draw the T. Okay, so here's the tension for the cables. That was T. Now remember, we found the value, we found the total, and we found the tension in each. Okay, and we know that this angle in here is 40. Not 440. All right. Um, so now, uh, let me draw in both X components. So this is the X component for the force the F vector, I should say, at the hinges. So I'll call that F sub X. And this vector right here will be F sub Y. Not F sub Y. F sub X, but for the tension, okay? So this will be F sub, uh, this will be F sub X, I'll call it F. Okay, actually, you know what? Instead of doing all these, let me do this. This will be F sub X for the hinge, and this will be F sub X for the cables, okay? So we'll use those subscripts. So now, you know, uh, elaborating on this sum of the forces in the X direction, I know that this X component and this X component uh, should sum up to be zero. Which one of them is negative? Obviously this one, because it's pointing in the negative X direction. So um, let's do that. So we have F sub X for the hinges minus F sub X for the uh, cables should equal zero, right? In other words, F sub X for the height should equal, uh, excuse me, for the hinges should equal F sub X for the cables. And that's what I was saying before that those forces should be equal. So we have that. Now let's think about the Y components. I'm gonna do the same thing with these triangles here. Let me draw in the Y component for the first one. There it is. And this one will now represent F uh, sub y for the hinges and then I do the same thing I know this triangle is getting a little messy but same thing there's the x excuse me the y component that's f sub y for the cable now how many y components do I have though well I have a y component for this a y component for this as I just showed and I have these as well right so we can see that these are negative whereas these two will be positive okay so let's create our formula now for that so I'm going to have, I'll draw a little line here. So now I'm gonna have um, F sub Y for the hinges plus F sub Y for the cables uh, minus F sub B for the bridge or weight of the bridge. It doesn't matter what we, let's just use F's of the bridge minus then the force due to the car, right, or the weight of the car minus the force of the car and that will all equal zero, okay? So now, uh, what I wanna do here is I wanna solve this equation for F uh, sub Y for the hinges, okay? So if I do that now, and I'll explain in a second why, uh, that will equal F sub B minus F, uh, excuse me, plus F sub C minus F sub Y for the cables. Now, the reason why I want to do that is because look what we actually have now. We have two equations, right? One that details the X component. I don't know why I erased that little thing. Um, one that details the X component of my hinge vector. And the other one that details the Y component of my hinge vector. Hmm. So guess what I actually 
I have two formulas here that deal with the components okay, of this vector. In other words, I have two equations. Take a look up here, guys. I have two equations, one equation that details this, one equation that details this. And guess what? If I can find those two, I can now find both my uh, resultant vector and the angle. All right. So that's what I need to now do. Okay. Let's see. Um, you know, I mean, I could even probably plug this all into an equation already, right? The sum of the four. Uh, you know what? Let me just plug this into my resultant formula already, right? The resultant vector should equal now the square root of the sum of all the x's squared plus the sum of all the y's. Okay, here's my x value. Here's my, this one will represent my y value. All right, so let's start plugging that into my equation here, square root of now the f sub x c, that will be squared plus f sub b plus f sub c minus f sub y c, that whole thing squared. All right, let's look to plug in some of the values now, right? So let's do that down here. So now um, let's put that square root sign. All right, we're probably gonna fill up the whole bottom part here. So here we have now our x component of the cable value um, squared. Now, which one should we use? Let's use the total value, okay? Um, so when I use that total value, I'm gonna use pretty much that precise number. So here we're going to now plug in so 13,000 to 113. Now remember, this is the total value of, look at the upper left-hand side, guys. That's the total value of this total tension, okay? I want to find, though, the x component, and therefore I have to take the sine of 40 into account, okay? So it's gonna be this resultant vector multiplied by the cosine of 40. That whole thing, that's the x value, now that's squared, okay? Plus now, this whole term squared, so the force, meaning the weight of the bridge plus the weight of the car minus the y component of the tension. Okay, so let's do that. I'm gonna do it at the bottom. So the force or the weight of the bridge was the mass of the bridge, 2,500 kilograms, multiplied by 9.8 plus the mass of the car, 900, multiplied by 9.8 to find the weight of the car, then minus the uh, resultant vector here for the tension, the 13213, 13213, times then, I know I'm running out of space, but that's then times, if you look up at this picture, uh, here is the uh, opposite side now of this angle, so therefore it's sine, so that's going to be times the sine of 40. And I'm going through this relatively quickly, but by now in the course, I think you guys should be able to follow that part. Um, so, now let's do the square roots. So let's be careful with all of our parentheses. So 13,213 uh, times the cosine of 40 and that whole thing squared plus then parentheses 2,500 times 9.8 plus 900 times 9.8 minus 13,213 uh, times then sine of 40 and that whole thing squared and then take the square root, and there we go. So now we get a nice value. Um, the resultant value now of all of that math will be equal to uh, 2.68 times 10, what do we get there? Times 10 to the fourth, and that's in terms of Newtons. And that is the F value, okay? So that we just found now, this piece. And now guess what? And now I gotta find the angle. How do we find the angle? Well, we do tangent, okay? Or, I mean, we could, assuming this is right, uh, we could do, uh, you know, something like maybe cosine of this because, you know, uh, there was a lot of math that was involved with the y side. So maybe the x side was simple. Uh, but, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we have the power of the calculator, right? So I'm going to do the tangent, okay? So basically it's the tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So focus over here on the right-hand side, it's gonna be this value divided by that value. Now, since I'm running out of space, I can't really write that all down, but uh, we're gonna do the inverse tangent then of that uh, value. So let's do that. So inverse tan, the numerator will be the uh, weight, of the, weight, uh, weight of the bridge, so 2,500. Actually, I'm gonna put two parentheses, hold on. When in doubt, use parentheses. So times 9.8 plus 
plus than 900 times 9.8 minus uh, one, so 13,213 times then the sine of 40. And now that whole thing divided by uh, the X component, right, of the tension. So that's going to be divided by parenthesis 13,213 uh, times the cosine of 40. And let's see what we get. There it is, 67.8. So 67, oh, one second. So 67.8 degrees. And that's the theta. All right. Oh, guys, thanks for sticking in here. All right, the math on this one was a little uh, tricky. Uh, concept not too bad, but it's just the math. And uh, since we didn't know both that force vector and the angle, we had to choose a different technique uh, to use instead of doing the, you know, the sum of the torques equal to zero. So we basically found the components, X and Y components, because we knew that the sum of the forces all had to balance. Uh, and then from there it was just simple, right? In terms of uh, the math was a little tricky, but it's just simple in terms of the concept that if you know the X and Y components, you can find that resultant vector by essentially doing Pythagorean's theorem. All right, guys, uh, I look forward to helping you with the next question. If this helped you out at all, please subscribe, and I will see you then. Take care.